For me, collaboration and design is something at the core of uh, what Indian design industry should have been already doing. One of the reasons why we've not been super successful globally in design is because of our inability to collaborate in design very open-minded. I think most Indian designers, architects have not been practicing collaborative design. However, now post-COVID, things have suddenly turned, the tables have turned, and people have started to realize and acknowledge the fact that we don't hold Coca-Cola formulas into our heads but we are ready to come with our core competencies and appreciate that other people also come with the same different set of core competencies and perhaps we can both together add value to our customers. So collaboration within our, our own domain expertise. So if you're into lighting design, facade design, landscape design, interior design or architecture, uh, within the domain expertise, collaboration is a different story. Outside the domain expertise, architect, interior designer, stylist, landscape, lighting designer coming together and working is already been done by us uh, through the generations but within our domain expertise collaboration is not we all what we all are used to doing so i would love to throw the floor open by asking my friend hitin uh, he's 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 handled some huge gigantic projects across he's been collaborating fantastic with different agencies other than his own domain expertise and profession but hitin don't you agree with me that within our own domain expertise let's say two architects in india collaborating and working together or two landscape designers collaborating and working together and two interior designers is unheard of especially when it comes to interior designers architects do still collaborate uh, what are, what are your views on it Hitin? yeah i mean uh, uh, i mean when uh, sort of in for collaborative design for a long time i think uh, the idea just popped in our minds after dealing the fountain and even college time that uh, nobody can be hovered rock for all the time so the demand in the industry is so intense and uh, the kind of specialization what is being asked is so high that I think uh, we need to uh, sort of follow up with each other in, the, in each other's uh, domain expertise and uh, get the things. The final thing is the result what you create, you know, the oven product what you create for the people. Uh, my first initial experiments was uh, one of the projects LNG Seawoods where I think I did realize that uh, the kind of depth, in-depth kind of uh, implementation of design principles, uh, talking about backward areas, the, how the things move, besides aesthetics and functionality of a mall, there's so many intent, internal things which are required at the operation level that you need to collaborate with such kind of uh, architects who special <coughs> worldwide. Yeah, I think that's the key of success to all the creation what you're going to create henceforth. Great. So Amit, into architecture, what are your views in terms of collaboration and uh, specifically to respect to uh, with respect to the Indian uh, design and architecture industry scenario? So Jimmy, you're uh, correct in assessing the situation in India that uh, we uh, don't want to collaborate specifically in our core competency. I think that's been handed down the generations. That's not something uh, that's new, but. Uh, Historically, that's been the case with Indian designers, but I think uh, the floor is now starting to open up and people are realizing, uh, just to give you a quick example, uh, although there are a lot of problems when two people with the same four competencies start collaborating on a project, there needs to be a fine balance between who has the veto power, who takes the final call, there are n number of issues that crop up, but I think that's not something that can't be ironed out. We've been uh, collaborating with a couple of uh, interior designers internationally at par. And uh, our experience so far is somebody like, for example, Vinitra working with our interior design team is a complementary skill where we lack uh, the interior stylist would step in and uh, where they lack in terms of technology and overall uh, spatial design process. I think uh, our team would complement that. So uh, there are complementary skills, but still in a core competence area, for example, just architecture or just media design, you get two people together or two teams together, very, very difficult unless you have those boundaries clearly, clearly defined. Otherwise, you know, too many cooks while the broth would be the case. That's that's my experience, my two pets. Vinitra, are the only lady panelists uh, around? Uh, so <laughs> you, you do an interesting mix of interior design and interior stylizing. I'm sure when you when you're doing stylizing for another interior designer, 
Uh, do you ever realize that there is a bit of a resistance or an awkwardness uh, or, or the comfort zone is non existent uh, because people feel threatened uh, at some point in time when you work with them or collaborate with them? <clears throat> it's kind of true. I think, you know, when you said that two interior designers working together is unheard of, I think that's kind of true. And, uh, you know, I wish it would be different. But, uh, and like Amit said, it is changing, which is good to see. But um, I think it really stems from the fact that um, if your core design sense and your core aesthetic is well defined, then you know that another person is going to come in and add value to it in a completely different perspective that maybe you would not have seen. And I think um, that is the strength of collaborating with a different designer because, you know, that perspective is what, you know, brings that uniqueness to a project when you have two designers working on a project. Um, even though I'm style, I predominantly style for my own project, I've not really styled for another designer. And I would love to. So why not? So interior stylist uh, is, is a new, relatively new phenomenon within the country. Uh, I think yes, in back, India it is. 10 years back, nobody used to use interior stylists, but now yes. interior stylists have been assigned to uh, uh, well, at least not all of the project, but some of the projects. And they definitely bring in a different perspective. Would you like to educate our viewers on to what value does an interior stylist bring across over and above the competency of an interior designer? It's a great question. You know. Um, I think the way I look at it is um, the interior designer visualizes an entire space in a certain way and brings together, let's say, key pieces or the larger pieces. But I feel like a stylist is um, someone who brings feel to the space, brings in that element of soul and almost sort of, and you know, this is a little bit visual driven because I feel like you want that perfect shot when you take a photograph. You want it to be a magazine cover. And how do you really get there? Is it, you know, is the mood going to be um, minimal and stark? Or is the mood going to be, you know, um, a certain kind of vibe that you want to create? And I think that's where the stylist really plays a big role in uh, deciding from what size of branch I want to use to should it be a flower? What kind of flower should it be? I mean, so I feel like it's that finishing touch, you know, just like makeup, maybe. I don't know. Is that a good connection? <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of, you know, putting those last final touches to bring the space alive. So two interesting things. Being a woman, you had to bring makeup on. And I, I love the way that styling is like a makeup on an interior. I, I, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's something that I'll remember, I'll remember. And the second thing you got in is flowers. That's what gets us to our next uh, panelist, Kunal who's a very well accomplished uh, landscape consultant and a very sought after one. I, I acknowledge that fact. So Kunal, what, is, what are your views on collaborative design? Have you ever seen two interior designers work together and appoint you as a landscape consultant? Uh, well, good evening, Jimmy. And uh, yes, I have actually worked on project where there were uh, two interior designers working and the head architect was from, I think, uh, Thailand and uh, as far as minds are open it's a very fragile line where I think uh, egos have to be in check and the, as far as everyone is concerned including us as landscape architects that uh, you know the project is the hero and nobody else is uh, then I think you can figure your way out but I think uh, not just us as Indians but even I've seen across what I used to study in Melbourne that we as human beings are conservative in nature and protective. I think design is a very protective oriented field because it's got to do with emotion. So if I were to just add a touch of psychology to it and understand it, why does it happen like that? Why do we resist ourselves from collaborating? I get some kind of answers that we, we, we think more from our heart than mind. And then of course there comes business. So the mind comes into application, but we resist each other is only because we are passionate about what we do. But once we overcome that, then I think it's far more easier to collaborate. But it's a tough one to get there, and especially for landscape architects like us, I think uh, we are yet trying to get out of the mold from a Mali zone to come into a landscape architect. Because then we have many more miles to go across to reach there. But yeah, I think 
we are there. I think there are lots of like we are doing lots of projects where we have also done where we've collaborated with a lot of landscape architects from overseas. Um, and uh, it's truly an enjoyable uh, experience. Uh, I mean, it can be nerve wracking sometimes because uh, you're, you're playing the role of surrogacy, right? So it's not your baby. It is somebody's baby and it's just being a, a surrogate parent to that baby. So how much of that baby is yours and how much of that baby is somebody else's is something that you have to be very clear in your mind. Because eventually the baby is going to go to the client because the client holds the baby. So, yeah, as far as the role that we have. I love the example, Kunal. Uh, yeah. It's a thing I've learned today. Collaborative design is like a surrogacy of the project. And how much of that baby is yours and how much of that baby belongs to somebody else is a question mark. I think it's, it's, a, it's a nice uh, example for us to kind of dwell into. Uh, so, Upendra, in terms of uh, facade design, uh, have you experienced uh, collaborating with another consultant uh, and, and a designer purely for facades or working on a project where two architects are simultaneously giving instructions and working on, on the facade together? Yeah, definitely. We have done one project wherein uh, there are some new trends coming up in facade wherein uh, when we are working on international projects, the trends over here in India and trends in Europe uh, are little different and the demands are quite different. So at times like uh, uh, the internationally beam is the requirement for facade also. Like in India, we are following beam for RCC, structural, MAP, every, everything, but not facade. It's not touch here. So we had collaborated for one project, uh, quite a big project in Dubai. We had done the uh, beam designing solution for them. <coughs> with a local company. So that we are done and uh, that how we are open, like wherever there are specialized uh, things are coming up, we approach the right uh, agency and we get collaborate with them and we uh, provide the complete solution to the client. Excellent. So uh, Hiten, we had lost you in between, but now that you're back, uh, you know, my personal experience with collaborative design within the world of interiors, turnkey interiors has been has been quite an eye opener. Uh, I've, I've worked with a few firms globally and uh, realized that when it comes to collaborative design within India, it's just not been possible. I'm working on an experiment that might massively boomerang back on my face or might go through and redefine collaborative interiors in India. Uh, it should be unfolded in the next three months. But till that time, uh, let me let me share my experience on collaborative design. So we we came across a project of designing the world's largest aviary. Uh, it was in Bombay. We of course needed a specialized skill set. And to my utter good luck, uh, we started working with Thomas Heatherwick from London, Heatherwick Studios. Uh, so to to do that collaboration, I went across to his studio and started working with him. Uh, just the tour of the studio was a hair raising moment for me because I realized uh, I, if at all I had even a teeny mini wee bit ego in my head about having accomplished something in the world of design. It came crashing down on earth. I saw the passion with which the studio was run. I saw the, the technology that was being deployed in the studio and the importance that was given to every project technologically, emotionally, and in any and every which way engineering wise, it was a complete eye opener compared to any other studio. So I don't know if all of you know, or for some of you might know, I started my career as a contractor. So I've had the privilege of walking into too many architects offices and designers offices and working at close quarters. My, my personal take Indian design fraternity is, is a little more egoistic than they should be. Uh, I'm not talking about any particular person. Uh, uh, everybody's smiling and laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the egos come in from a different, different place. Uh, a place of sense of having achieved at the cost of clients and customers, uh, having delivered things across. But when you see it at a global level, you see you see uh, somebody like Thomas Hedovic collaborate and work with another studio. Each one comes with core competencies. It was such a huge learning lesson for me in my life, not only the approach towards design. Uh, so two things really define my design thought process. One was my work with IDEO. And very early on, learning about design thinking, 2006 is the, is, a, is, is the first year I got an exposure to design thinking, where most people in the world were just grappling with this new form design mantra by idea of design thinking. And I did a course with them. 
that taught me human centric design and empathy and uh, it, it was it was a different way of thinking because like like uh, kunal said it's a baby you're producing of course indian designers also respect their work and give it their 100% but the egos do not allow them to work with other people they are very protective about their clients about their projects and if anybody were to say anything positive or negative they do not have the humbleness and the humility to be able to take feedback so in management corporate parlance we talk about positive feedback and negative feedback but the design fraternity doesn't have it we are trying to redefine it so hitin in your experience what is it how would you guide other architects to to i think i think if you all can just go on uh, mute it would be better there's something some back feed is coming hitin how would you advise and guide other architects what are the do's and don'ts so that they start welcoming collaborative design as a concept for those who are so egoistic who think that i am the beat and end it all in the world of design and everybody else is inferior to me for those people can you leave some words of wisdom see pseudo intellectualism uh, i don't think really helps you in uh, today's world um, it's always a part of uh, you know being protective and uh, being uh, uh, you know uh, solo uh, don't go a long way as i told you the world is you know globally if you compare yourself you are right i've been i've been to zadi's office in australia i i saw the kind of language what what they using and the kind of things what you we are very happy doing a bim air we are very 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 focusing on productivity design patterns and all those things and you see people are talking about different languages they have their own softwares they are working on their own logics in the designs and that's how the kind of innovative designs are being created i mean if you think that you've achieved the world then i think you are the most uh, pitiest of thought process you're having today i think uh, you have to come out of your short short thinking and you have to really move out and see where you really stand uh, i used to be proud as uh, like large gigantic projects in india and uh, blah 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 and i went to a couple of cityscapes saying that i used to see uh, one architect who had really 300 pages of his book and i thought he must be having a portfolio of his projects and it was just one bungalow he had designed in one of the places god damn i in afghanistan and he had written a 300 books uh, his thought process about that bungalow you know and that was that, that was must be in 2008 and i kept be wondering i mean what are we boasting of i mean you have you must have designed township but you never have actually thought about the kind of concepts of design you have actually implemented and even bothered to even document those particular things into one particular consolidated book so that your next generation of the team gets benefit of that so i think there's a long way in which we have to go professionally we we have definitely creative thinkers we have uh, creative uh, achievers we have damn good uh, neat uh, professionals the only thing what we need to do is we'll have to step up in the world see where we stand uh, adopt what's been happening uh, in uh, in all the different parts of the world the kind of finish upendra is working with me for a couple of projects and the kind of detailing which i personally I go through to each and each and every project is where my soul of the design comes from you know so i think my landscaper my even my architects we have three different architectural mindsets working on the same project we have the three three different absolutely three different logics to uh, to a particular design when uh, we start implementing it so i think it has become a very important part and the person people who still feeling that uh, a single man army can work good in near future then i think it's going to be the dream is going to be short lived Uh, uh, taking, taking up from where Hitain left, and my belief that uh, Indian uh, Indian architects and designers per se ha- think they have some Coca Cola formula with them that will be lost if they just expose and start working with other professionals uh, as far as work is concerned. What are your views and what is your advice to instigate or motivate other designers to start having a mindset to open up, collaborate, uh, come up with core competencies, appreciate the other person's core competencies? and put together deliver a result which is uh, which is uh, 2x of what they would have done alone that is the first thing is you actually uh, analyze introspect where your standards are you know first of all and uh, like uh, we have such a great panelist on this particular forum everybody has such a great usp in their own expert field expertise uh, fields but at the same time there may be two more better experts in the same particular field giving re- ready to work on the same idea with different perspectives i think overall it's all about analytics uh, which come to the final thing what's going to be your uh, happiness index what's going to be your uh, what's going to be your uh, healthy index health index what's going to be your uh, 
uh, aesthetic index, what's going to be life cycle of your project. I mean, all these particular things have to get in together. Like uh, Rita was talking about styling of this particular project. Yes, it goes to the deepest and the, the smallest part of picking up a small artifact for your particular project because overall you want the package to be appealing. So I think the message is that guys open up and uh, just uh, start respecting everybody else's intellect also and uh, make sure whatever you're creating is for the, uh, it becomes ageless and uh, is for the betterment of the society. Super. Love the way you put about happiness. So Amit, uh, you know, countries nowadays are not, not measured by their GDP, but the happiness in our countries is, is something which is of prime importance. And uh, happiness come or cannot come with a single myopic vision of one point of view of design, but a more holistic approach of design. So what is your advice to other designers and architects in the country who, who, who sh you want to be a catalyst and drive them towards collaborative design? So I think my own personal experience, Jimmy, is uh, we started off as an architectural design practice, uh, found that uh, a lot of places we were not able to convey ourselves properly to the interior design team involved, which, is, which was a separate office, separate practice, and so on and so forth. It happened in lighting design also. Ultimately, you know, uh, in fact, what you just mentioned, uh, we wanted to control everything on a project. Uh, we went through the process and soon realized that it really doesn't work that way. Because if you're going wrong in one stream, there are n number of chances or every chance that will go wrong in all other streams on the same project because you don't have that second set of eyes to look at it critically. But that critical uh, uh, thought process, that needs to be respected. As you said, uh, you know, happiness index, you need to bring down your level of expectation or your level of looking at yourself as uh, the all and be all of uh, design on that project and start respecting what the other guys are bringing to the table. I think the key lies uh, in choosing people who are, who, who are not from the same core competent area or same core competency, but they complement uh, their skill sets. And uh, it's, it's easier said than done. But I think that's where uh, you know, curating, curating designers across the table, I think that should be another profession now uh, in the field as to how to put which designer to work with another team. I think that requires a lot of experience and curating uh, skill. So yes, uh, you have to be open. Uh, but as I said, uh, unfortunately, in design, two plus two uh, is not always equal to four. So peer review processes don't work in our field as they do in uh, engineering fields. So it's it's a delicate balance. And uh, uh, I think it's a learning curve. The more you indulge yourself and allow your company to indulge into a process like this, the more you'll come uh, le uh, learning out of it. And uh, I think with a, with a wish and desire to do that more and more on further projects. Right. So Amit, with the amount of specialization that's happening in the world of design, I think sooner the design community accepts collaborative design as a mantra, the sooner they will realize that they will be able to carve a niche for themselves and retain that position because one gets good at doing what they do repeated. So repeatedly when they are doing it again and again and again, they really get good at doing that particular narrow skill set. And that's what really refines them into, into one, of the, one of the heavyweights in the world of design. Uh, so, uh, uh, Venitra, uh, in, in, in interior design and stylizing, what are your giveaways to the viewers who are looking and watching at this particular webinar uh, as to how would they, how would they go about uh, looking for partners uh, who, who, like Amit said, may not be peer to peer, but looking for partners with core competency then says, let's pitch on this project together. Do you think that's going to happen in the mid-market segment of design? I hope it does, you know, because when um, when I started the business in India, um, you know, as a practice, we always tell our, you know, audience where we've sourced the product from. And I found that the most natural thing to do, because at the end of the day, there is a small business that has worked really hard behind building a product and to be able to give them that platform is only natural. And um, I don't think it's a very common practice. But I feel like, you know, um, one of the ways in which interior designers can actually make that collaborative effort happen is by, 
you know, roping in the experts and making sure that people get the credit that they deserve for the kind of, you know, there's a lot of custom work we do for our projects. There's someone who's helping us put this vision together. There is that custom light picture that comes in or there is a piece of furniture that is made that caters exactly to a space. And, um, you know, I think um, the very simple thing of saying that we partnered in this together and they are the people who made it happen is probably a first step in that direction, you know? Um, because I feel like then you can see the amount of work that goes into a project, it does take a village, so. Pindra, within the world of uh, glazings and facades, do you think uh, there is a scope for collaborative design or uh, it would it would uh, it would be counterproductive because it's got uh, a lot of technicalities and engineering calculations. It's like having two structural designers on the same building. Uh, uh, you can you can have a clerk of works to cross check the design and validate it, but two designers simultaneously working on the same part in engineering uh, at times turns counterproductive. What are you, what your views on it? Yeah, uh, in facade, facade industry where we are acting as a, a consultant, uh, it becomes uh, quite uh, difficult to get collaborate on single project because uh, engineering is uh, a process where, as you rightly said, the structure engineer, there is uh, uh, some flow of uh, thoughts when he design, like, uh, and based on his thinking, his thought process uh, might be the other structure engineer is thinking in different way. So there is a clash. And as we are discussing, at times ego comes in and uh, we stuck. So uh, collaborative design, I, I think India, we are far, uh, we need to wait for a uh, yes to get into all these requirements because uh, since this is a specialized field, nobody wants to share with each other the their secrets, the way they are handling the projects the way uh, they present. So many people are trying to uh, hide it. And it is not going to help really, because uh, as a uh, industry, uh, if we need to grow, we need to share and we need to raise the benchmark. We need to push our limit, how we can give uh, better than this. So all these practices are still, means I'm not saying uh, it's happening in India currently. I resonate with you. Uh, somehow the mental psyche of I will lose my client or I will get exposed or I'll lose my employee. I, I, I the people are not getting out of that psyche. I completely resonate with you. You put it very mildly. I put it very boldly. But uh, people people need to get out of that psyche. And growth can never happen unless and until you you realize what your competencies are and you go out and go out and give it your best. And when you learn from others like a sponge. When you, when I, if I'm working with Amit on something, Amit has fantastic core competencies or Hiten has core competencies. We can implement those competencies within our practice and see how we can grow. And, and that's where mutual learning happens. Conversations also start happening in a, of a different nature. Uh, today, architects and designers convert to what drinks, uh, but the conversations are not purely work. Uh, when it comes to work, they're very protective. They want to work in silos. Uh, so Kunal, within the world of landscape, uh, you spoke of global collaboration. In the world of architecture, unfortunately, uh, and Hiten will resonate with me, uh, the collaboration is predominantly our Indian uh, architectural firms are being made as drafting offices. Uh, so surrogacy has been literal that this is completely my genes, my baby. You are just going to hold it till the time I tell you to hold it, draw the drawings and forward it across. But then there are practices like Hiten who will do their own value adds, uh, even, even, even if they are a collaborating design uh, firm. So what are your views in, in local domestic landscape design? Do you think uh, you you are a leading leading landscape consultant? Would you collaborate with a landscape consultant in Indore or in Ahmedabad and and kind of work together on a project? Kunal, you need to unmute. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, I would uh, definitely uh, believe in collaborating with other landscape architects. We actually, uh, you know, landscape architects in India is a very small breed. And when it comes to Mumbai, it's, it even gets smaller. So it's a small fraternity where practically each one knows each one, unlike uh, the other design uh, attributes fields. And yes, we have definitely worked, but yeah, to a marginal level uh, and not to that great level where we would happily collaborate. But yes, I have taken 
Uh, I like the help from people like Great Projects in Ahmedabad. I have collaborated with somebody from Ahmedabad to help me get some information or some part of the aspect of the project which has been handled by them. Uh, and we do try to doing that, but to be utmost fair, uh, I think it's a very, very tough job. But what, what we have, in fact, actually tried to do uh, within our scope and field of work is that we have tried to collaborate with horticulturists. And uh, landscape architecture, as one would view it, is not just about putting plants and planting, but it's looking at the space, how you would visualize it as just as how an architect would do when he's given a raw piece of land. And what you would do within the premises of the building is what probably we would do outside. Uh, that's one aspect, but then the other aspect is also horticulture, and uh, which is also very important. And I think that is something that our firm is right now very heavily collaborating with and within India and uh, without having any shame collaborating with a lot of different people and introducing them to the clients saying that these are a part of our team and they will work purely on the horticulture because I, I don't know if you realize but India has gone through a long wave in landscape architecture where uh, it initially would have started during my grandfather and father's time with nurserymen going into sites like an Alibak site or a Kandara site or even a factory at Reliance would probably uh, be done at that space of time by a nursery person having plants and then uh, installing them. Like it's as good as you can do Vijay says and buying a TV and then of course the guy comes and installs it for you. Most homes are done that way. No acoustic consultant comes and does, puts up a 90 inch TV for you. I mean, not many do that. Same thing happens in landscapes. So at least we're trying to do that change where we hire the expertise such that at least perishable commodities like plants are well taken care of and give the project a better uh, value to the whole space. I was in Alibaba in one of one of our friends' villas that were designed by you, and I love the landscape. Uh, Thank you. So. Coming, coming, coming before before we come to an end, we would love to get your views post COVID. Uh, do you, have you seen a drastic sea change in the in the uh, end application and people's desires to be more closer to nature and plants? Uh, I think I, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, saying this on the uh, public media, but I'm quite frank, so I would say it. Uh, I think my company's turnover has practically doubled what I would have probably made by 31st March. 2021 is what I've already made that money in this moment because ever since August to now, I think anyone who has 10 crores or plus in a mutual bank deposit or something wants to get, just get rid of it and buy a home in Alibaba, Khandala, Lonavla because I think it's it's, it's time that people realize they can't live in small cubicles. I, I mean, it has just it's changed the mindset of people that you know you need to invest into a lifestyle and not be be like how introspective vision. Super. So I, I, I resonate that idea with you and people want to be post COVID. Uh, there is a sea change in their mindset. People want to be more closer to nature. People want to be in, out in open spaces. Their appreciation for open spaces has now doubled up, quadrupled up. It's gone many folds over than ever. Uh, they get scared of spaces with large number of people around. Uh, now, having, having said that, I think we've come to the end of the session before we take some uh, uh, questions across from our viewers. Uh, before that, I would love to hear quick closing remarks from each one of you. If there is any advice or guidance you would love to give to budding designers, architects, uh, and established companies on collaborative design, Hiten, to begin with you. Uh, my two pens is uh, pretty simple. Just look at uh, collaborating more and more with people who whose ideas resonate with your design ethos because it would be very, very difficult uh, for companies to collaborate with diametrically opposite thought processes to begin with uh, and ease into this collaborative process and then take a maybe a jump a couple of projects down the line into uh, a very different thinking designers coming together but uh, to begin with it you you need to identify or you need to be part of a collaborative team who are sort of thinking the same way uh, that's where I've seen projects really uh, fructify and uh, the results are fabulous as against opposing uh, thought process teams coming together. So it's it's all about selection of who you're collaborating with. I, I think, you know, it's, it's important for all of us to realize within the design industry that we are creative people 
everyone does something well on their own in what we do. And that sense of security is probably the starting place to, you know, rope in collaboration, to bring in people to look at things differently, to help you put a larger vision together. And, um, you know, I totally agree with what Amit said that it is um, important to collaborate with like-minded people, someone who probably has the same vision as you do. But I think even to bring that on, we have to sort of be open to that collaborative mindset. Sure. Uh, Upendra? Yeah, as, as I told, in first industry, collaboration uh, is not to that extent. We had also done some collaboration with some company. The, it doesn't work for long. And we had uh, started our own beam uh, uh, services and all this expertise in-house. Uh, and uh, uh, what I think uh, collaboration works because we are in international market also, we are providing collaboration with some facade consultants who are expert. We get to learn from them. That is the advantage. And I personally believe we are having innovative ideas, collaboration. Everything is here. So whatever is on paper, can somebody can copy. But in your mind, nobody can copy your mind. And uh, we need to come up with new ideas. And we need to think ahead of the time, like what, what will be requirement and how we can make it more different than the services. Let people copy you. Well, well put it. Uh, Hitin? Yeah, I think uh, collaborations uh, need to be, uh, it need to be, uh, what do you call it, uh, most uh, value engineered, uh, uh, most precious. And finally, it should get some network to the society i think that's what all collaboration is uh, uh, meant to be uh, if people people are are ready mentally to accept collaborative efforts that's the first point and then you can channelize and say okay what our core competencies are and whether our ideologies match and our value system matches because design is a lot about value system also uh, like he said design is up here and uh, nobody's going to be able to steal it away stop behaving that you have a secret formula People will take it away from you. Uh, nobody's going to take anything away from you, including your employees. Uh, so start being open-minded, open-hearted. Uh, start doing human-centric designs. Uh, build in loads and loads of empathy within the DNA of your design practice. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. And what we're going to leave behind uh, is the residue of our design. Uh, and, and during the time that we traverse on this earth, try and make this world a better place.